Well, happy Monday, everyone. As you know, I'm Deacon Marty, and uh, this is Mondays with Marty. Today we're going to be talking about a saint that um, was pretty forward-looking in his views and uh, what he attended to as the Pope. Um, so let's get right into it, if we could. Um, happy Monday, like I said. Today's saint was born near Brescia, northern Italy, on September 26, 19, or 1897. And he was the second of three brothers. His name was Giovanni Battista Montini, but you may know him better as St. Paul VI. His father, Giorgio, was a lawyer, editor, and eventually a member of the Italian Chamber of Deputies, or the Italian Parliament, as better known. His mother, Guadita, was very involved in Catholic action circles and clubs. After his ordination in 1920, while in Rome, he did graduate studies in literature, philosophy, and then completed a doctorate in canon law. He joined the Vatican Secretariat of State in 1924, where he worked for 30 years. Montini, along with Domenico Tardini, was considered to be the closest and most influential advisor to Pope Pius XII. Montini had just one posting in the diplomatic service of the Holy See, a secretary in the office of the papal nuncio to Poland in 1923. Of the national, nationalism he experienced there, he wrote the following, quote, This form of nationalism treats foreigners as enemies, especially foreigners with whom one has common frontiers. Then one seeks the expansion of one's own country at the expense of immediate neighbors. People grow up with feeling of being hemmed in. Peace becomes a transient compromise between wars, end quote. This is going to be very formative in his um, early years in that position as to when he carries it over to Pope, as you'll see later on in this discussion. He described his experience in Warsaw as, quote, useful, though not always joyful. Interestingly, when he became Pope, the communist government of Poland refused him permission to visit Poland on a Marian pilgrimage. Montini was also chaplain to the Federation of Italian Catholic University Students, where he met and became very good friends with Aldo Moro, who went on to become Prime Minister of Italy from 1963 to 1966, and again in 1975 to 1976. Moro was kidnapped by the terrorist organization Red Brigade in March of 78 and murdered two months later. A very devastated Pope Paul VI presided at his funeral mass. During World War II, Montini, was, while serving under Pope Pius XII, was appointed a substitute under Cardinal Secretary of State Luigi Maglioni. In that role, roughly as the chief of staff, he met the Pope every morning until 1954 and developed a rather close relationship with him. Again, this is where you're going to see how he learns the functions of a Pope and in that office specifically. Montini was also tasked in answering thousands of letters from all parts of the world that were sent to the Pope during the war asking for prayers and help. He formulated replies in the name of Pius XII, expressing empathy, understanding, and providing help where possible. At the request of the Pope, Montini created an information office regarding prisoners of war and refugees, which from 1937 until 1947, 10 years, received over 10 million requests for missing persons and produced over 11 million replies. At the request of Pius XII, Montini was also involved in the reestablishment of church asylum, providing protection to hundreds of allied soldiers who had escaped from the Axis prisoner of war camps, also to Jews, anti-fascists, socialists, communists, and after the liberation of Rome, German soldiers, partisans, and any other displaced persons. In 1954, Montini was named Archbishop of Milan, in the first months, Montini showed his interest in working conditions of people and in labor issues especially by personally contacting labor unions, associations, and giving related speeches to their workers. By engaging listeners in this way, he sought to win disaffected workers back to the Catholic Church. He called himself, quote, the Archbishop of Workers, end quote. 
He believed churches were the only non-utilitarian buildings in modern society and a most necessary place of spiritual rest. He initiated the building of over 100 new churches for service and contemplation. Thus, he oversaw the rebuilding of an archdiocese heavily damaged during World War II. In 1958, Montini was the first of 23 cardinals appointed by St. Pope John Paul XXIII. Correction, St. Pope John XXIII. After the death of Pope John XXIII in 1963, Montini was then elected to Pope himself, taking the name Paul VI. He first met with priests in his new diocese, telling them that in Milan he had started a dialogue with the modern world and asked them to see contact with all the people from all walks of life. And just two months after his election as Pope, Cardinal Montini, now Pope Paul VI, who had helped in preparing Vatican II and participated enthusiastically in its first sessions, made the decision to continue that council which had ceased because of the mourning period for the deceased pope. pope. The pope then reopened the ecumenical council on 29 September 1963, giving it four priorities. Number one, a better understanding of the Catholic church. Number two, church reforms. Number three, advancing the unity of Christianity. And number four, dialogue with the world. The council would have three more sessions before its conclusion on December 8, 1965. Pope Paul VI worked to ensure bishops would accept the council's 16 documents by overwhelming majorities. According to Pope Paul VI, <clears throat> the most characteristic and ultimate purpose of the teachings of the council was the universal call to holiness. Quote, all the faithful of Christ of whatever rank or status are called to the fullness of the Christian life and to perfection of charity. By this holiness, as such a more human manner of living is promoted in this earthly society, end quote. This teaching is found in one of the most famous documents that come out of Vatican II, Lumen Gentium, the dogmatic constitution on the church promulgated by Paul VI on 21 November 1964. While in his papacy, Pope Paul stunned the world by visiting the Holy Land in 1964 and meeting Athengaras, the ecumenical patriarch of Constantinople. He made eight other international trips, including a 1965 visit to New York City and spoke on behalf of peace before the United Nations General Assembly. He also visited India, Colombia, Uganda, and seven Asian countries during a 10-day visit in 1970. He also initiated the World Synod of Bishops in 1965 and in 1966 decreed that bishops must offer their resignations on reaching the age of 75. In 1970, he decided that cardinals over the age of 80 would no longer vote in papal enclave, conclaves. He increased the number of cardinals tremendously giving many countries their first cardinal. Eventually, he established diplomatic relations between the Holy See and 40 more countries, also instituting a permanent observer position at the United Nations in 1964. Pope Paul wrote seven encyclicals, his last one on human life in 1968, which pro prohibited the use of artificial birth control. Pope Paul VI also made extensive contributions to Mariology, that is the theological teaching and devotions during his pontificate to Mary. He attempted to present the Marian teachings of the church in view of her new ecumen ecumenical orientation. In his inaugural encyclical, Ecclesium Saum, the Pope called Mary, quote, the idea of Christian perfection. End quote. He regarded devotion to the mother of God as one of the paramount importance in living the life of the gospel. Pope Paul died at Castel Gantalfo on August 6, in 1978, after suffering a heart attack, after which he continued to live for just three hours. According to the terms of his will, he was buried in, quote, the true earth, end quote 
and therefore he does not have an ornate <clears throat> sarcophagus, but is buried in a grave, a simple grave, beneath the floor of St. Peter's Basilica, though in an area of the basilica's crypt near the tombs of the other popes. His confessor, the Jesuit priest, Puelo Dessa, said that, quote, this pope is a man of great joy, and if the Paul the sixth was not a saint when he was elected pope, he became one during his pontificate. The diocesan process for beatification opened for Paul the sixth, titled A Servant of God in Rome in May of nineteen ninety three at the behest of Saint then Saint or then Pope John Paul the Second. On December or twenty December two thousand twelve, Pope Benedict the the sixteenth, in an audience with the cardinal prefect of the Congregation of the Cause of Saints, Angelo Amato, declared that the late pontiff had lived a life of heroic virtue, which means he was then called venerable. After three separate miracles involving unborn children from nineteen ninety three until two thousand fourteen. They're all investigated and verified as being the result of prayerful intercessions to Pope Paul VI. He was then approved for sainthood and canonized on 14 October 2018 by Pope Francis. His memorial is celebrated on 29 May, the day of his priestly ordination. Well, this concludes... Uh, our information update, or not an update, but information on Pope Paul VI. I hope you enjoyed it. I think next week uh, we're going to take a look at St. Pope John Paul, and when we hear his story, we're going to see how it tied into the story of this saint and um, how they both worked together and collaborated, in a sense, on uh, Vatican II. And with John Paul II's papacy, we'll see how Vatican II kind of came to fruition and what they both intended for the world and through their love of God. Well, I hope you have a great day. Please be safe, and we'll see you next Monday.